Welcome back to the Interviewing People Career Cast, featuring highlights from the full-length interview with Jessica McMurray, a clinical research coordinator at The Ohio State University James Cancer Hospital. In the highlights, Jessica shares about her time in the OSU marching band, the value of her animal science degree, what she does as a research coordinator, and much more. So sit back, relax, and know you can always go back to watch our full interview if you'd like to learn more. Enjoy the show. I ended up in marching band. Um, the Ohio State marching band is one of the reasons why I went to Ohio State. Um, the other one was veterinary school. I had hoped to go to veterinary school and I wanted to be in the band. Those were my two goals for college. Um, and everybody every year tries out for the marching band. Um, your space isn't guaranteed if you make it one year then you're gonna be in band for the next four. Um, and your space isn't guaranteed if you're a regular marcher every week. Um, we have something that's called challenges where um, each row with the exception of one has two alternates and you have to, those alternates challenge someone the Monday before a new performance um, to, make sure that everybody's marching at their best. And if that regular isn't marching the best, then you have the potential to beat them and get their spot. Now they can get it back, but you have the potential to be on the field. Whereas as an alternate, you would be off to the side. You have marching tryouts, playing tryouts, and then a combination. There's four sets of those. Um, and there are very few kids that come from the tiny schools like ours. Um, there were a couple kids from Finley and, um, I know there was one, there were two guys that were from Arlington that their last year was my freshman year okay. of college. So, um, it is not a walk in the park. It's really difficult and, uh, you have to put in the work, but when you earn it, you earn it, and you earn it every week. I fell into a job at Battelle. Um, I was there for two years, and I worked um, solely with rats and mice. And um, in a court, it's, Battelle is the largest nonprofit research and development company in the world. Um, there are branches everywhere, but their home base is here in Columbus. And um, so they do lots of different types of research, um, be it government contracting or um, cybersecurity, I think is one of their things they do now. And I did a lot of toxicology research. So our group in its entirety was doing testing um, with rats and mice to see, okay, is this product that's on the shelf going to potentially cause cancer? So for two years, I was trying to um, keep people from developing cancer. <laughs> Um, a lot of people would uh, scoff at an animal sciences degree um, simply because, yeah, you're learning how to breed animals and pick stalls is a, what a lot of people think of when they think of animal sciences. And it's more in depth than that. Um, you're learning about balancing nutritional levels and, okay, this animal is having X problem, is it because of something nutritionally? Is it something wrong with their confirmation? Did they get a disease? You know, what's going on that's leading to this problem? So you can bring in the appropriate groups to help take care of the problem. Okay. 
and it's not always necessarily the veterinarian. Um, animal sciences can get you to be, if you earned even a master's degree, probably in animal nutrition, you could work at some place like a Cargill or DuPont to a certain extent in um, their animal nutrition departments. Building relationships has helped me um, get at least two jobs. Um, like I got the one at Battelle through my friends who knew a recruiter who put me in touch with them. And that's how I got that. Um, my current position is because I let my manager know, how can I help someone else in our group? And this is a former manager. Um, I was able to get the bulk of my work done pretty quickly. And so I would always offer to help. And one day she said, hey, this section is pretty short staffed. Would you be willing to give up Monday through Wednesday mornings to go help them? And then you come back here and do your regular work. Um, but for the most part, those three days, you go stay up there. Yeah, sure, that'd be great. I had a lab background at that point. This was helping out with the lab. Um, and so I was able to go uh, help with them for, gosh, an entire summer. And that connection allowed that manager to know, hey, she really knows her stuff. Um, I, we work well together. Um, she works well with this group of people. And so that's what helped me to at least get an interview. And then I'd like to think it gave me a really good footing to get this particular job I have now. So I am slightly different than the normal clinical research coordinator. Um, most of the clinical research coordinators are patient facing. So you could come in to the James and see your physician for whatever cancer you've been referred to or you see regularly. And they would say, okay, well, I know we have X study coming up, this is what it's about, but we'll have the coordinator come in and speak to you and give you a little bit more information so you have a general basis of what's going on, what's expected of you as a research patient and go from there. Normal coordinators would then go in and they have the research protocol memorized or near as close to memorized as possible. And they can answer any and all questions. They can let you know what the schedule looks like and um, ask you if you're interested in just taking more information home versus would you like to sign consent now? Um, so you legally have to sign consent to being on a research study from which you can remove yourself voluntarily at any time. As crazy as it might sound, don't be afraid to fail because if you're afraid to fail, then you're afraid of potentially taking a chance that might lead you to a really good opportunity. Like with the Ohio State Marching Band, um, they always say, don't cut yourself. So don't work all summer learning all these fundamentals and learning how to march and learning how to play. Come tryout time, you decide, oh, I'm not good enough. If nothing else, you go and you don't make it fat, fast, past first cuts, okay, you know you're going to get information as to how to do better next year. Okay.
thank you for watching this episode showing highlights of the latest Interviewing People career cast with Jessica McMurray. And to make your Mondays better than ever, subscribe so you can hear more career stories from those actually doing the work. Thank you for watching. And as always, remember that the best part about Mondays is interviewing people.